the one good thing about Australia is generally our drains, our stormwater drains and our sewer system are separate. But they still have these things here which are which are overflows and basically what happens if a sewer collapses or blocks up, it will flow you can see that device there, it flows through this hatch into the drain and that triggers a thing and they know that it's collapsed somewhere ahead of this point. It'll flow in that way, you don't have sewage pouring into the streets and, and everything. It's hardly ever used because sewers hardly ever collapse or, or block up. But we have been in drains sometimes when it has happened, it's not very nice. Getting tampons stuck between your toes and sanitary pads around your ankles and Fun such. <laughs> Starla swam out of um, a drain under the opera house and actually had a bit of like toilet paper on her chest. It's, it's not the nicest thing to know that you've been swimming through. But Sydney seems to have a lot more poo in their drains than <laughs> Melbourne. It's so true. <laughs> We're not putting shit on Sydney or anything, you understand? No. No, they'd, no, they'd, no. Be, they'd be the first to admit it. There's actually one guy, um, Silogen, who's like, you know, probably at the moment he's the keenest. Well, you know, he does so much for the Sydney cave clan. And he, um, we just call him the poo man from Sid clan because well, we've been in there just to have a look. But once we've figured out oh, there's sewer overflows, we don't really worry about him too much. But he'd be like in there climbing down. And, yeah, yeah, he's got a Scottish accent. There's, there's, uh, yeah, there's quite a bit of pool down here, but it's not too bad. I might just go for a weed. You know, like he's just really into... But they would be the hardcore clanners, wouldn't they? The ones who went through sewers. Well, generally, we it's don't. More stupidity, I think, than anything to do with being hardcore. Being hardcore, you know, get on your hands and knees and crawl up tunnels and things, but like wading, to... wading through right. poo and trying not to fall over, that's pretty silly. Uh, when I came along and joined the clan, the, uh, the membership was very much uh, young men, about uh, 18 to 20, and definitely working class. I hope they'll forgive me for saying that. Um, I was the first much older person to join the clan and um, we struggled with that a bit but they accepted me and uh, I was uh, delighted at the end of the first year with the clan that I was voted best first year explorer in their, at their awards night which was a vote by the general membership of the clan. So that was, um, that was what I wanted and that was great. Later, a, uh, about actually the same time I joined the clan, a woman called, uh, who's known as Alien, that was her drain name, uh, she joined and she did some excellent drain exploring and became a, a drain legend. So the old demographic was uh, creaking a bit now. We had um, old guys and, and women doing serious exploring. A guy called Krishna came along and uh, became an awesome drain explorer and uh, they later revealed he was bisexual. This, um, this broke down the remaining barriers in the, in the clan and I think now it's pretty much open to everyone. I think the membership has grown up quite a lot and uh, there's a lot of tolerance to past members, no matter who they are. We're in a tunnel called Yarra Tunnel, and uh, it's got like a series of really big waterfalls in it, like, you know, probably 20 feet high each of them, and we're in sort of the middle of a few of them. There was one downstream of us, one upstream of us, and there was probably about 10 smaller waterfalls, and. We were doing some filming and it started to rain a couple of suburbs away. And uh, but the thing is, is when, when you get flash flooding in a creek or a river or like that Swiss canyoning disaster from a couple of years back, a few years back, you don't really get much warning. But in, in a drain, you actually can hear the water coming for quite a while, like sometimes 10, 15 minutes. So we could hear this water and each time it went over one of these little series of steps and then drops and then waterfalls so it got louder and louder so we started panicking and then we realised it's getting that close that we're we're going to be between waterfalls and that's the last thing we wanted to be because they were like quite a few minutes apart and we thought if we're going along and then a, a wave does come it'll take us over the waterfall and the waterfall was quite um, large a big drop so we started trying to get out of a manhole at the one of the we got to a waterfall we're trying to get out rather than try and make it past the next waterfall and we're all standing in the ladder and it was just this big square manhole I couldn't get it off and in the meantime the water's coming over and one legend is like and then over another one and then another one and we got to the stage where we couldn't hear each other talking we knew it was going to hit any second and then I just got this like big adrenaline rush and you sort of get up on the ladder and you use your back 
and I just pushed and the manhole just the seal gave and then light sort of poured in through the crack and I was just looking down I could just see these guys and they were just the, the expressions on their face was just total fear like please please and when the manhole got off I sort of forced it up so I was already exhausted from trying to do it just for you know for like five minutes continuously trying and I got it up and as I pushed it up on my shoulders in front of me was just this like Mercedes coming towards me but luckily it was right in front of a stop sign so it was slowing down anyway and I was just looking I was like I couldn't put it back down because if I put it back down I wouldn't have had the energy to do it again so I just stood it flipped it up and we got out and then um about like in the movies like like within seconds the wave came over and just was smashing into the waterfall that we were on i would have been all right because i was up the ladder i was high enough and the next person probably would have been okay but the third guy we would have had to climb up the ladder and you know we would have all had to been hanging on the one spot because he would have been knocked off the the ladder for sure and we got out and then we pulled a video camera out and we just filmed the man you see this water like pouring over and uh, we were just like, shit, you know, how close was that? We're under Hawthorne somewhere. I'm not so sure of the location. I've not been living in Melbourne for too long, so, yeah. We seem to be dropping quite a bit here. Yeah, it does. It drops down a lot deeper. When we get to the waterfall, you'll see a huge drop, which is maybe, how deep do you think that is? Four or five metres. Four or five metres. It's pretty deep, yeah. The roar is coming up the uh, tunnel now. How far are we from the waterfall? I think we're maybe another three or four minutes walk till we get down there. How did you get into clanning? Um, I got in into clanning up in Sydney through a guy I was at school with and he just took me down a drain one day and from there it was just all over. I actually moved down here with a, a guy I met in the cave clan and yeah, it's all interbred. <laughs> cave clan is messy. And there aren't many women, are there, in the clan? Um, there's there's a fair few women in the clan. Not nearly as many as there are guys, but enough of us to put them in order. <laughs> what was it about clanning that made you hooked? God, that's that's the question. Um, I don't know. I think I like the the quiet and the, the dark and just the fact that there's nobody else around and you feel you feel almost safe that it's your own space and you know it's only you and and your friends. There's, nothing nothing else there i like the solitude of it all i also like the exploring aspect like this is just a drain obviously it's just straight but some things you explore like bunkers for example there's lots of different tunnels and lots of different paths you can take i like the whole exploring factor like actually discovering new things we're getting closer obviously yeah it's getting a lot louder not sure how much further it is it sounds deafening, but it, is it just this trickle of water that's falling over the waterfall to cause that noise? Yeah, it's not much water, just this, which is, what, a foot wide, not very deep at all, and, yeah, it all just sort of piles up, and you'll see how large the drop is, and there's actually a huge pool of water at the bottom of the waterfall, so it's the, the noise of all this trickle landing in the pool down the bottom. And you were saying about keeping the, the blokes in order and the clan. Is it a very blokey thing? Um, I guess it is a very blokey thing in that the girls that are involved in the cave clan, they're not really girly girls they're not you know afraid to get dirty or break a nail but um we, we've got a section of the clan called the clan girls that we've been trying to promote to get a few more girls involved and we'll do a few things um you know get dressed up and do a few silly things every now and again just for the guys but it's you know it's basically just trying to get some more girls involved and how different is the sydney clan from the melbourne clan um sydney clan's pretty different we've actually got a bit of a rivalry thing going on it's just a bit of a joke but um Sydney clan are a lot more um, internet orientated and a lot more sort of, I don't know, I guess nerdy and geeky with it all and Melbourne clan are a bit more laid back and, you know, like to explore with beers whereas Sydney clan are really, really involved and instead of just going out to do a drain, they'll, you know, go out all night and be going for 12 hours whereas Melbourne clan, they'll probably maybe do a drain and go to the pub. The bottom of the waterfall is bluestone because if it was um, concrete, the water falling continuously into one spot would just erode it away, and uh, where the bluestone don't erode from the pressure of the water. And the reason the bluestone goes so far back is when this is flooding, obviously the water is going to be flying way out further. So yeah, that's uh, this is a waterfall. It's not the biggest one or anything like that, but it's just. Well, actually, up until a few years ago, probably thanks to Edgar, there never used to be a ladder here. We used to just, people, they just have ropes hanging off here. But um, Edgar 
wrote to Melbourne Water and said there's no letter there and, you know, this is an official thing to say that if anyone gets hurt there, you know, I'll bring it up. So what happened when you did that, Edgar? Well, to my absolute astonishment, they installed a ladder quite properly. Well, I, was very, I was really pleased about that. A lot of the people that come into the clan, they come into it and they just, they get this energy about them. It's what we always say about the new explorers and they go crazy, they're out in a drain every day, they'll be doing a new drain. And those sort of people, they normally burn out and after a few years, they, I don't know, they seem to sort of disappear again, but... Yeah, they do, they burn out. But there's a lot of people, like I've got a lot of really close friends in the clan and we've been around for, you know, like years and years and years and it's one of those things that's in our blood, we'll never stop doing it, so. I've been over to New Zealand um, exploring just to do drains and Dugo was over in Europe last year doing the catacombs under France and in Vienna, like, if you go overseas to do a drain, it sounds a bit crazy, but it's just in your blood, that's what you think, that's what you see, you know. When, when you first start in the cave clan, you'll... You'll be walking along the street and you'll see a grill and every gutter box you sort of look down in and go, oh, you know, I wonder what's in there. And every building, you know, you'll be, oh, I wonder how we can get in there. And it definitely gets in your blood. Last year, almost a year ago to the day, one of the guys in the cave plane, his name's Prowler, he's like the nicest guy you'll ever meet, so you can't help but like him. He's a champion. And his wife was walking his... Uh, taking the three kids to school and she had a heart attack and died. So when Christmas came around, which was like five months later, we thought, oh, maybe we can collect some money and buy the kids a present. And it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but we ended up getting, uh, like, buying them a PlayStation 2 because they loved PlayStation and they wanted a PlayStation 2 but couldn't really afford it. So we got them a PlayStation 2 and about eight games, an extra controller, a memory card. You know, we just, everyone was just, like, giving $50 and it was, that's just something that from my personal point, like, sometimes when shit like that happens, I just think, uh, you know, cave painting is a good thing, apart from the exploring side of it, and we found so much cool stuff to explore, that when you do stuff like that, it's quite touching, you know, like, and you, you realise it's got more than just the people ex explore tunnels, it is sort of more like, you know, the clan thing, the family thing, like, you do get pretty close to people. I'm going to cry, I've got something in my throat. We're in a huge pipe, it's about uh, five and a half metres diameter. It comes out into the Yarra, this is where this train finally ends after all this, these adventures. It comes out into the Yarra and just around this corner we'll be able to see the Yarra and see one of the bridges out there. There it is, isn't that beautiful? When you follow the flow and see the glow, that's the glow. This is a wonderful view, isn't it? It's, it's the mixture of seeing daylight and also this wonderful river view. We can look out and we're seeing the bottom pylons of a massive bridge over the Yarra. And we can see bicyclists on the boulevard uh, bike track as well. So after all that underground, dirty, yucky stuff, here's reality still out here. It hasn't gone away. And this is where the network of drains ends. Yes, that's right. All the branches of maize converge to this point and the water flows out here into the river. Uh, that is a great view out there. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. So we say a fond farewell to reality, and we go back to the mighty room, which is one of the biggest underground rooms in Melbourne. It's essentially a plumbing fitting where two huge round pipes join and uh, connect to the very even larger round pipe of room. And that's where we leave the cave clan as they disappear back into the drains of the maze. Thanks to the members of Cave Clan, Edgar, Dirge and Doug. Technical production, Russell Thompson and Heather Jarvis. I'm Andrew Dodd. Thanks for listening.